Welcome to Meeple Mentor. I'm Jared, and we're about to play Horrified. Let's take a look. I'll show you how. Feel free to pause the video as needed to follow along with your copy of the game. My goal is this video can not only teach you to play, but can be shown at the game table to help set up and teach the game at your next game session. As part of that goal, I've added chapter timestamps in the description to the different sections of the tutorial to easily recap relevant rules for you. This tutorial is brought to you in cooperation with Luck Factory Games out of Concord, North Carolina. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell below the video so you don't miss any of my latest content. The game of Horrified is based entirely on the old universal monster movies like Dracula, The Mummy, The Invisible Man, and others. Players will work together cooperatively to defeat each monster you're playing against that game. It's a game where you win together or lose together. Each monster must be defeated in a different way through completing unique tasks. Avoid being attacked and defeated too many times, as this increases the group's terror level. Don't forget to help the townspeople as well. To set up the game, first lay out the main game board in the middle of the table. Place the terror marker at zero on the terror level track. Shuffle the monster cards into a face down deck beside the game board. Then shuffle the perk cards and set that by the board as well. Place the 10 villagers and three attack dice by the game board. Now you'll need to decide how difficult you want your game to be. When playing against a monster for the first time, it's recommended to only use two monsters in your game. You can always choose the monsters to fight against each game. A standard game uses any three monsters of your choice. For a real challenge, include four monsters. If you're new to the game completely, the rules recommend you play against the creature from the Black Lagoon and Dracula. Grab each monster's corresponding mat and place them in a row next to the board, ordered from lowest to highest frenzy. Place the fire frenzy marker on the monster mat with the lowest frenzy number. I'll explain now setting up the player's area and afterwards come back to each monster's unique setup. Each one sets up a bit differently. First, give everyone a reference card. Now mix up the various hero badges face down and deal one at random to each player. Then collect the hero standee that matches the color and picture. The rest of the hero badges and hero standees can return to the game box. Each hero's badge indicates the starting location for them. Each hero should be placed at their starting location named on the game board. Each player should take one perk card off the top of the deck and keep it face up near their hero board and reference card in front of them. Place all 60 item tokens into the cloth item bag. Mix them up and draw out 12 randomly from the bag. Each one shows a location on it. Place each of the 12 items out on their indicated spots on the game board. Keep the bag of items near the table. The player who most recently ate garlic takes the first turn. Now I'll go through the special setups for each monster, starting with the two recommended for your first game. Any monsters you aren't fighting in your game should return to the game box, along with their mats and unique components. The convenient part of setting up each monster is that their setup instructions are found on the back of each monster map. When playing against the creature from the Black Lagoon, place the camp overlay on the board on top of the camp space. The creature's figure starts at the lagoon space. On his mat, place the boat at the starting X spot. When playing against Dracula, place his figure at the crypt space to start. Places four coffins on the board with the red icon facing up at the crypt, the dungeon, graveyard and cave. To set up Frankenstein's monster and the bride, first put Frankenstein's monster at the graveyard and the bride at the dungeon. Set out the two dials on their mat, yellow for Frankenstein's monster and blue for the bride. Their images should be face down. Align both dials so they are pointing to zero. When using the invisible man in your game, place the precinct overlay over the precinct board space. The invisible man's figure starts at the end. Against the mummy, you'll need the museum overlay laid on the museum board space. The mummy figure starts at the museum. Take the three scarab tokens, numbered one to three, and mix them up face down. Place them randomly at locations four, five, and six of the tablet. Do the same with numbers four, five, and six on the one, two, and three spots. 
the center spot should be empty. Place the soul sign token next to the board. To set up the Wolfman, place the laboratory overlay on the lab board space. The Wolfman figure starts at the mansion space. Place the cure token on the flask outline on the right side of his monster map. Place the hunted emblem next to the board. Starting with the first player, the game plays clockwise with players taking turns one after another until the game end is triggered. This can happen if the terror track reaches the end, if you've defeated all the monsters, or if you run out of cards in the monster deck and must draw one. Each player's turn has two phases, the hero phase first, followed by the monster phase. A hero will get to take actions on their turn during the hero phase. Each hero's badge shows how many actions they may take. Just look at the top. It will be three, four, or five. You may always choose to take less actions than you're allowed. You may take any available actions in any order and multiple times if you wish. The first basic action is to move your hero along a lit path to an adjacent space. Heroes can never go through water spaces and can only cross the river using one of the two bridge spaces. When you move, you may also freely take any number of villagers in your space with you. Monsters on the board don't affect your ability to move. If there's a villager in your space or in an adjacent space, you may do the guide action to move the villager. You can move a villager from your space to an adjacent space or bring one villager adjacent to you into your space. Villagers may not move through water spaces either. When on a space with item tokens, you may spend an action to pick them all up. You can take as many as you want from your space. Keep your items face up in front of you on the table. There's no limit to how many items you can hold. Heroes are allowed to share items if in the same space. As an action, a hero may freely give or take any number of items from each other. It doesn't need to be one-to-one -one trades or even involve your hero. If two other heroes are with you and you need them to exchange items, they may do so as part of your action, even if you don't give or receive any items personally. As you're in specific locations related to advancing a monster's task, you must spend an action and use an item to do it. Each monster has different tasks and requirements, but using an item to advance their task does take an action. When you're allowed to attack the monster directly, you may choose the attack action against a monster in your space. You'll use items to defeat them. Remember, a monster's task must be completed before being allowed to defeat them. Each hero has a special ability printed on their badge. Using this special also costs one of your actions. Just read what it says. They're all self-explanatory. During the hero phase, you'll want to help direct villagers to where they need to go. They can be added to the game board during the monster phase when certain cards come out. When that happens, find the villager specified on the card and place it on the map at the space it says. There's no limit to how many villagers can be on the board at one time. Each villager has a safe location printed on their standee, indicating where you should guide them to. Use your move and guide actions to get them where they need to go. They don't move on their own. Your reward for helping a villager get to their safe location is to draw a perk card from the deck. The villager gets removed from the board. Escorting villagers gains you perk cards during the game, in addition to the one dealt to you at the start of the game. Players should keep them face up in front of them and let other players know what they have. It is a cooperative game after all. Any number of perk cards can be played on any hero's turn during the hero phase. So other players can help your turn by playing their perk cards to benefit you. When playing the card, resolve what it says on the card and discard it to a face up discard pile. Playing perk cards is free to do it, and it does not take an action. After a hero has finished their hero phase turn, proceed to the monster phase. First, draw the top card from the monster deck and resolve the three parts on it from top to bottom. When finished, place it in a face-up discard pile and let the next player take their turn, starting with the hero phase again. Firstly, draw the number of items shown at the top of the card, if any, from the item bag. Each item will have a location printed at the bottom, which is where it should spawn on the map. If you should need to draw items but the bag is empty, return all the discarded items to the bag and mix them up to keep drawing. Next, you'll resolve the center of the card known as the monster event. It will involve either one of the monsters or the villagers. Gray cards are the villagers, while colored cards are for a specific monster. Resolve the text on the card and proceed to the third step of the card. 
Also, if the events monster is not in your game, you can ignore that part and continue to the third step, the monster strike. The bottom of the card indicates which monsters move and attack during the monster phase. In order, from left to right, move and attack with each monster shown by their printed icons. Remember to skip any if that monster is not in your game. You can refer to the monster icons found on their mats. Note that the event monster on the card will never attack on the same turn unless they are frenzied. The fire icon means that whichever monster has the frenzy token on them becomes frenzied and moves and attacks. This could mean a monster moves and attacks twice from a single card. Some events direct you to move the frenzy marker to the next monster. Move it to the next highest frenzy number on their mat, wrapping again back to the lowest once there are none higher. There will be one frenzied monster at all times, so if told to move it but there's only one monster left, just keep it where it is. The monsters move up to the number of spaces shown next to the arrow. However, if they started in a space with a person, they won't move. When moving, they'll always move toward the closest hero or villager, taking the shortest path possible. If different paths are equally valid, the current player decides which way they move. Should a hero and villager be equidistant, the monster will prefer to move toward the hero. If its path is equal to different heroes, the current player chooses which. Generally in ties, the current player decides. After a monster resolves its move, if it is in a space with a villager or hero, it will attack with a number of attack dice printed on the card shown next to the die. If the monster is alone, it won't attack. The monster will attack a hero instead of a villager if both are in its face. If multiple heroes are in its face, the current player decides who it attacks before rolling the dice. This symbol rolled means the character was hit by the monster once per number of hits rolled. The exclamation symbol means the monster's special power is activated once per power symbol rolled. Refer to the monster's mat to see what it does in this case. Hits are always resolved before the powers. When a monster attacks a villager and rolls a hit on one of its dice, the villager is defeated and removed from the board. Then you must increase the terror level by moving the marker one space forward on the terror track. Heroes cannot prevent the villager's death. When a monster attacks a hero and rolls a hit, the hero is defeated. However, they may discard one of their collected items for each hit received to prevent this. If they don't have any items or choose not to use any, they're defeated. Increase the terror level by one space and remove the hero from the board. At the start of their next turn, place their hero figure on the hospital space and take their turn as normal. They don't lose their items or perk cards. Each monster has special tasks to complete in order to defeat them. Once their tasks are completed, you'll generally then be able to attack them. Each monster makes use of the items you collect during the game. The items are either blue, yellow, or red, indicating its type. Red are physical items, blue are intellectual, and yellow are spiritual. The strength of the items varies. The number shown at the top of the item token is its strength value. The location printed at the bottom is simply where the item is placed when drawn from the item bag. When using items to complete tasks, check to see the iconography shown on the monster's mat. If just one item is shown, you may only use one item of that color per action. If there are three shown on the mat, it means you can use any number of items in that color in a single action. The strength of the items are all added together to determine if you've met the strength goal. You must meet or exceed the goal value. Anytime an item is used, place it in a discard pile next to the game board, unless the special action tells you to place it on the monster's mat. Items don't automatically return to the bag. Once a monster is defeated, they are no longer considered to be in your game. You should ignore any further events or monster strikes for them for the rest of the game. If the defeated monster had the frenzy marker, move it to the next one. Any items on their mat should go to the discard pile. All of the monster's components can be removed and returned to the game box. Let's go through each of the monsters you could have in your game. The creature from the Black Lagoon has special movement available to it via the three water spaces, the lagoon, river, and waterfront. He's the only one who can move in these spaces, so when he moves you should consider the water paths as well for determining his shortest paths to his targets. His required task to be defeated is to find the hidden lair. The heroes embark on an expedition aboard the Rita to explore the lagoon. This all happens on his map. While at the camp, a hero may take an action to search the lagoon. 
discard one item of any color to move the boat to the next X on the path of the same color. By carefully choosing which color item to spend, you can move the boat further with each advance action taken. The layer is represented by the final blue X at the center. The last item used must be blue. While the boat is at the layer, you may attack the creature and drive it away. A hero in his space may take an action to defeat him by discarding three items, one of each color. The strengths don't matter. He's then defeated and removed from the game. Dracula's special task for the heroes is to smash the four coffins around the village. While in a space with a coffin, a hero can take an action to smash it. They must discard any number of red items with a combined strength of six or more. Then you can flip the coffin token over to show it's been smashed. Place it on Dracula's mat in the spot for it. Note that coffins aren't items and can't be picked up. Once all four coffins are destroyed like this, you can defeat Dracula. While a hero is in his space, they may take an attack action to discard yellow items to defeat him. Any number of yellow items can be used as long as their strength total is six or more. Then Dracula is defeated and removed from the game. Frankenstein's monster and Bride of Frankenstein come as a pair into the game. The monster is known as Frankenstein, while the bride is referred to as simply the bride. To defeat them, you must teach them what it means to be human so they can live happily together. But if they meet before you complete this task, they send each other into a fit of rage. Whenever they are in the same space before their task is completed, increase the terror level by one and return Frankenstein to the graveyard and the bride to the dungeon. They have their own symbols and are treated as separate monsters for monster strikes on the cards. When the frenzy icon appears in a strike, move an attack only with Frankenstein. To teach the monsters, players must spend yellow items on Frankenstein and blue items on the bride. They each have a dial on their map. When taking an action to teach Frankenstein in his space, discard one yellow item and increase his humanity score by the strength of the item. Then you may move him in any direction the same number of spaces to help prevent them from meeting. The task action works the same way against the bride, but uses a blue item. Once a dial has reached its maximum, you can flip it over to show they are ready to meet. You may still take the action once the dials have flipped to force them to move together faster and defeat them. As soon as they meet, they are defeated immediately and removed from the game. To defeat the Invisible Man, heroes must supply evidence to the police to prove he exists. While at the precinct space, a hero may take an action to spend an item of any color to advance the task. The item will be placed on his mat on an empty spot matching its color. Only matching colored items can be spent for empty spots on the mat. Once all five spots are filled, you can defeat the Invisible Man by trapping him. While in the same space, a hero can take an action to discard any number of red items to meet a total strength of nine or more. Once done, he's defeated and removed from the game. The mummy enemy believes one of the heroes is the reincarnated souls of his true love and wants to lure that hero to him. The first time a mummy event is resolved, the current player gains the soul sign and moves towards the mummy. That player keeps it the rest of the game. To break the curse, players must align the six scarabs on the tablet. While at the museum, a hero may take an action to discard one yellow item and make as many moves as the strength of that item. A single move on the tablet is sliding a scarab along a groove to an adjacent spot or flipping a scarab face up. You don't have to do the full amount of moves. Once all six scarabs are face up and in the matching spot for their number, you may defeat the mummy by returning him to his tomb. While a hero is in the same space as the mummy, they may then take an action to discard any number of red items with a total combined strength of nine or more to defeat him. Remove him from the game. The Wolfman has a vision of which hero will be his next victim. The first time a Wolfman event is resolved, the current player takes the hunted emblem and the Wolfman moves towards that hero. That hero keeps the emblem for the rest of the game, much like the mummy. The heroes will need to discover the cure for lycanthropy by testing ingredients and formulating the antidote. While at the laboratory space, a hero may take an action to test an ingredient. Each empty item spot on the wolfman's mat must be filled. Heroes may use one blue item per action to place it on the mat where the strength number matches. Once all these are filled, the current hero gains the cure token. It may be transferred to other heroes with the share action like other items. The cure can never be used to ignore a monster hit though. Whoever is carrying the cure can defeat Wolfman. 
While in his space with the cure, discard the cure and any number of red items with a combined strength of six or more. With that, you defeat him and he's removed from the game. The game can end in one of three ways. Either the hero's triumph, the terror level reaches the skull, or the monster deck is empty. By defeating all the monsters, the game will immediately end with the players winning the game. By successfully defeating them, you've saved the village from a horrific fate and perhaps saved the monsters themselves. Should the terror marker reach the end of the track, the game ends immediately with the players losing. Everyone is too terrified to continue. The villagers and heroes abandon the village and let the monsters take over. Lastly, the game can end if the monster deck is emptied and a player tries to draw a card. Simply going empty doesn't trigger the end. It's not until a player must draw a card, but can't. The game then ends with the players losing. Unfortunately, the heroes took too long to save the village. The villagers have all fled and there's no town left to save. If you choose to play again, you may want to do so with different monsters or more monsters for more difficulty. Also, you can choose to let players select which heroes to use based on their special abilities. They may also decide who should be the first player. It is possible to play horrified completely by yourself. The villagers are more fearful if there is only one hero trying to save the village, so the terror marker starts at 3 on the terror level track in a solo game. All the rules of the game remain the same, with some small adjustments. You may not play as the courier hero. His special action cannot be taken in a solo game. There are two perk cards that should be removed before starting, or just ignored and replaced when drawn. Remove special delivery and conduct an investigation cards. If you keep them in and draw either, just discard it and draw a new perk card instead. Everything else remains the same. Keep the rulebook handy and check BoardGameGeek.com for FAQs and extra content. The Meeple Mentor channel is now part of the board game community, The Gateway Network, made up of great upcoming board game content creators. The network includes Instagrammers, podcasters, YouTubers, artists, and more. Head to thegatewaynetwork.com to support new and independent board gamers. Also, I want to quickly shout out the excellent board game cafe in Concord, North Carolina, Luck Factory Games. Whether you're an avid player, developing your hobby, or looking to recapture the nostalgia of a game you played long ago, there's something for you in their expansive library of more than a thousand games. Through hosting events and having game teacher volunteers, they're all about promoting diversity and inclusivity to grow the hobby. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Like and subscribe if you found this teaching helpful. Stick around to watch another Learn to Play video. And remember, teach when you can, but always be learning. See you next time.